Okay, <clears throat> uh, this tutorial is how to set up GTK Radiant 1.6.4 in order to edit for Quake 2 World on Mac OS X. Uh, I'm running OS X Lion. This build of Radiant should work on Lion and Mountain Lion. Um, so we're going to start by assuming that you already have Quake 2 World installed uh, and working correctly. Uh, you can install it through the binary application that's available on our website, quake2world.net. Uh, if I look in my applications folder, there's Quake 2 World. And there's the game and the updater. Um, be sure to run the updater if you haven't done that in a while. It's always good to make sure you have the latest stuff installed, um, <clears throat> mainly because some of the uh, GTK Radiant configuration files and things like that are actually provided through the game directly. So um, I've just downloaded GTK Radiant 164, and I'm going to go ahead and open up the image file. <clears throat> And uh, that gives me this little folder here where I have radiant.app and a shortcut to my applications folder. So all I need to do to install Radiant is just drag this into applications. It's copying it. takes a few minutes. There's several large game packs that come with Radiant, uh, including Wolfenstein and Quake 3 and Quake Live. <clears throat> um, okay, now that we have that, we can go ahead and eject this, and we can fire up Radiant. There it is. Okay, so the first thing that Radiant does <clears throat> when it starts up is it asks you to select a game. Um, I've already gone and configured these for my local install of Quake 2 World, but I'm going to reconfigure them now uh, just to show you how that's done and show you what the paths should be if you're running Quake 2 World from our .app bundle. So if I configure more games <clears throat> and select Quake 2 World, it's going to ask me for two separate things here, the game directory and the binaries directory. Now for most Quake-based games, uh, you would actually have one field here and everything would just go under, you know, <clears throat> um, Quake3.app or whatever. On Windows it would be you know, program files slash Quake3. On Mac it's a little bit different because of the way that Mac application bundles work. Underneath the .app file you have uh, a binaries directory and a separate resources directory. So that's what we need to point Radiant at here. So this is pretty easy. We're just going to browse to it. So we go to the file system, applications, Quake 2 World, Quake 2 World.app, and Contents, Mac OS. <clears throat> oh, I actually have these backwards too. So the Mac OS folder is where the binaries live. That's where Quake 2 World and Q2W Map, the two programs themselves, actually live. The game directory, this is where all the all the data lives. So the map files, the textures, and that stuff. Uh, in the Mac application bundle, that stuff lives under <clears throat> Let's see if I can go back there. File system, applications, Quake 2 World. Oh, Quake 2 World. App, contents, resources. There. So now we have the engine binaries set to Mac OS, and the game directory set to resources. These are the two paths you need to set up in order for Quake 2 World to work correctly. Uh, that's it. So now if I click OK, we're back at the Select a Game dialog, and now that Quake 2 World is correctly configured, I can go ahead and hit OK and it should start up. There we go. And it's actually loading the last map that I had opened, <clears throat> um, which was Arms of Lilith, but we can go ahead and open any Quake 2 map, or Quake 2 World map rather, that we want to here. Uh, you can see I have a whole bunch of them in my recent files here. Um, note that all of your per-user data um, should live in your home directory dot quake 2 world default maps, etc. Uh, so if you create custom maps and things like that, you don't want to save them to applications, quake 2 world, quake 2 world app, yada, yada, yada. Um, those things will actually get overwritten by the updater when you run the quake 2 world updater. So everything that you create, all of your custom maps, all of your custom textures and things like that should go in this directory. It's your user directory and then dot quake to world slash default. That's where everything should go. We can open up a different map. And 
it's running kind of slowly because I'm recording the screen right now. But uh, as you can see, everything's all there, including the new uh, id tech 2 service inspector, which probably looks very familiar to folks who have used NetRadiant or uh, GTK Radiant 1.5. So that's it. That's how to set up GTK Radiant to map for Quake 2 World on Mac OS. Thanks for watching.